we got here today is a front end collision job. Now, what you're looking at is your typical, I rear-ended somebody in the bumper because I wasn't paying attention type situation. And that's exactly what happened here. So if we look at this car, you can see that it's a Mercedes-Benz. At the time, this was a hundred thousand plus dollar car, fully loaded. And now you can probably buy one of these cars um, 12 years later, of course, for around six or seven thousand dollars. So it goes to show you that just because it has the fancy name on it doesn't mean it holds its value. So what I'm going to do and propose to you the DIY Auto School student of the day is that I'm going to go ahead and try to accomplish and show you that even though this is a hundred thousand plus dollar car it's not as safe as you would think being a hundred thousand dollars now let's look in at perspective here and let's really put the light on it and we'll say if this was an American made car, of course we know that nothing is made in America anymore, but we'll go ahead and say made in America. Uh, if this was a, a heavy body made in America car, and being in the wreck that this car was in a wreck ass, believe me, it wouldn't have damaged it to this extreme. So before we go any further, I want to go ahead and create the scenario of what's going on with this car hundred thousand plus dollar than it is. Uh, did I tell you it's an aluminum hood and if you buy a new one it's about three thousand dollars? I don't think I told you that. But now you know. So now you know that this is an aluminum hood and that's one of the reasons it's a three thousand dollar, a hundred thousand dollar plus car. But let's go ahead and tell you the scenario. So the guy driving the car, he kind of basically told me the story. Um, he was coming up to a light. He was going under 20 miles an hour. There was a pickup truck in front of him. The light turned green. And he was predicting that the truck would keep going. So he kind of, you know, comes up on the guy 20 miles an hour. The guy didn't move. He beeps his horn. The next thing you know, bam, I ran into the back of this guy's truck. And guess what? Nothing happened to his truck. It all happened to my car. It's his fault. That he wrecked, that I wrecked into his truck. It didn't do shit to his rear bumper, being an American truck, made truck that it is. So let's go ahead and look inside the vehicle at a couple situations that will happen when you get in a wreck. And the main thing that's going to happen in a particular car like this is your airbag's going to pop out. Now, to replace the airbag, you don't just replace the airbag. You got to replace the air blag. There's another item inside the steering wheel called a clock spring. And then you got to replace the sensors in the front. Now the sensor is what made this go off. The clock spring is actually a fuse that blows the bag up. One more thing in this particular car that we haven't checked out is our seat belt. Now I see that this seat belt still moves and is in good condition. If this seat belt would have locked up, because that's actually part of the safety features in this car, if it would have locked up on him, then we wouldn't have had to just replace one seat belt. We would have had to replace all the seat belts in the vehicle, which would have cost thousands of dollars. The airbag is $2,300, and then the sensors up in the front are another $900. So add all three of those up, and we're not counting the seat belts in case the seat belt would have messed up on us okay that's a lot of money now you see why most insurance companies would total this car out immediately once the airbag has been deployed so the first thing we need to do is figure out we need to get this hood open and we're going to reach down behind here um, you can see all the mangled trash that's in here uh, this would be our 500 800 dollar grill that you would have to buy for it if you were going to fix the car uh, with all parts from Mercedes. That's about 700, 800 bucks. 
The uh, bumper cover on this thing is another $1,500, $2,000. But uh, let's see if we can get this hood open and look underneath and we'll look at some more damage that was occurred by it as we were uh, inspecting it earlier. So we need to get this hood latch off. There it is. Okay. So let's open the hood up and hopefully it'll stay up. It won't stay up. Let me get a uh, a hood prop and then we'll look underneath and I'm going to show you some situations that is going to tell you for $100,000 that shouldn't have happened. Now the first thing you're going to see right when you walk up you're going to see this upper tie bar that belongs to the core support. What a core support is it holds the radiator and the condenser and that is the uh, support that you would bolt all that to. You can see that that is completely crushed in but we did get lucky and this side of the vehicle is in good shape because it got hit over here. Now usually in an accident like this, if you get hit on the corner, it's going to push the whole front end this way. This core support is designed to collapse on purpose like that so it doesn't bend the frame. So this is called a collapsible core support. Another good thing about this core support, and I will show that to you, is this is not welded in. This is a bolt-in core support designed for this car. But let me show you some stuff on it that makes it a pile of shit for a $100,000 plus car. If we look right in there, that piece right there, you can see where that broke off. That's a hole right there. That is the oil filter. On the Mercedes-Benz, the oil filter is on the top. And I'm trying to dig it out here. And here's our oil filter right here. So this is our oil filter housing that actually would sit uh, like this in here. Let me try to get that in. There it is. And then that would be where the oil is. So when this thing got in a wreck, of course, all the oil dumped out of this car immediately. Another thing that busted, very expensive, this is our power steering. This is our power steering housing, which actually, and like you can't even see it, but it goes right here where my finger's pointing. That's your power steering. And you can't just buy this and put it on there. You got to buy the whole power steering pump to replace that. Um, another thing that went majorly wrong with this is the radiator and uh, condenser crashed in. And you can't really see it because it's a mess down there. Crashed into all the pulleys. It ate the belt up and probably bent some of the pulleys as the accident happened. Now, this item right here is our ABS anti-lock brake system. If this got messed up, and I see that it's loose, okay, if this actually got messed up, we got serious problems because that piece right there is very, very expensive to replace. Now, I didn't see any lights on, but I noticed that it is just hanging in here and it's loose. There you go, look at that. And it looks like the bracket itself that holds this in place has busted off. And then we come into our headlight situation. Go ahead and clear some of this out and get it out of the way here. Because it's just all busted up and, and broke anyway. And you can see that uh, it's made out of plastic. But it's a $100,000 car and well worth the money to own. You can see where the bumper cover uh, busted in half from the corner of the hood, slamming into it, and then it's, of course, it busted this headlight as well, which needs replaced. These are the high tech expensive ones. This actually has the, what is that, a halogen or, or uh, whatever they call that. That's the expensive headlight system. And those headlights right there are approximately $1,500 a piece if you put brand new ones on or you got connections to buy them brand new. So there's another feature of your $100,000 car. And you're kind of getting the idea why it costs $100,000 because of all the expensive stuff that it takes to actually build the car and make it as cheap as it actually is. Now I'm going to go also and explain one more thing about our $100,000 car. Normally when you take this car to a collision specialist and it has this on there, they're going to charge you double or triple because it's a $100,000 car. This is a dollar sign that says if you drive one of these cars, you're fucked. You're fucked. 
and, and you're going to have to pay ten times more money to uh, have that fixed instead of that out there, Mr. Hyundai driver or, or Suzuki or whatever you own. Because you're an elite person in the world and you deserve to get fucked because you are rich and that guy over there isn't. And that's basically what you're looking at when you see this right here. Let me go ahead and explain it to you in very short term words. It's a fucking car. That's all it is. It's just like that car. Or that one over there. Or the one behind. It's a car. It has nuts and bolts holding it together. It's got spot welds. It has a fender. It has a hood. It has a bumper. But one thing that this car has that that one over there doesn't is this right there. So to start this little venture out, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our, uh, our shock, hood shocks. And then we're going to go ahead and get rid of this hood. Use your brain as a parts computer. So when you put this thing back together, you know where all the stuff goes. That's another smart thing. So I got a hood clip tool here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start popping these clips off. There's one. Okay, I think I got all the clips out. Um, no, I didn't. There's one right here. I still got another one in there. Okay, there we go. We finally got it out. And one of the clips didn't even come out all the way. Um, yeah, let me show you the type of clip we're talking about here. It's one of them babies right there. And you got to pinch that thing so it'll pop out of there. And if you don't have the right tool to do that, or you catch it at the right spot, it won't come out and it usually breaks. Those are about $3 each at the dealership. So there's our first chore of doing a collision job on our $100,000 automobile. The next thing we want to do is we got to disconnect this and I see that this actually pops out of here. Let's see if we can get it out. All right, this is a cover for that. Now you see why it costs a hundred thousand dollars because they got to pay their they got to pay their uh, engineers that they're over 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 exaggerated engineers all that money to design a car like this that ain't no better than any other car probably worse. It's not really the manufacturer making the money. Let me tell you who it is. Let me go ahead and explain it to you. It's the fucking engineers that over exaggerated and designed this pile of shit to wreck at 20 miles an hour so you have to pay all that money to have it fixed. Is basically what it is. That's who's making all the money. The overpriced idiot engineers that designed the pile of crap. Oh, you motherfucker! I don't fucking believe that. There it is. Okay. I thought it popped back in there. I thought it went back in there um, to take this piece off. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's what this is. Look at all the clips that hold that thing on place. Look at that. Unbelievable. Un-freaking believable. Use your brain as a parts computer. So when you put this thing back together, you know where all the stuff goes. That's another smart thing. Okay, now that we got the cover off, now, well, here's something else. Fresh air intake for our, yeah, engine. Damn it. Now that we got that uh, over-exaggerated cover off, I want to go ahead and show you this situation of what we're looking at when it comes to uh, a window washer on one of these. And you can see... Look at this. That one's uh, broke, I believe, so that needs replaced. But you can kind of see what's going on. Um, very, very over-engineered, definitely for sure, uh, on a window washer. Use your brain as a parts computer. And I'm speculating that this window washer that I'm taking apart is probably a first-gen um, 
range sensor type, there you go, uh, situation that uh, is made on this piece of shit. Did I mention over-engineered? Yeah, very over-engineered. And then also we got a sensor right here. This is probably his sensor for, um, I'm going to speculate, temperature gauge sensor. That's what that's for. There we go. All right, and then take all this off. And he's got that, which is another wire hooked to it. And we don't know what this is. Another washer. Okay, so it's got three washers. I thought it only had two, but it's got three. Three washers for a windshield this size. Use your brain as a parts computer. So when you put this thing back together, you know where all the stuff goes. That's another smart thing. And then of course, since this car got hit so hard, I'm sure the hinges are gonna need replaced. So we'll go ahead and remove our windshield wiper wire harness from the hinge itself. And you can kind of see what's going on with that. Um, we got them expensive plastic clips again, holding that on there. And not just one, but uh, three of them. One more thing about these European cars. They're over bolted as well. Let me zoom that out. I forgot I zoomed that in. There we go. Okay, can you see me now? Can you do that? I'm sorry, I was taking the hinge bolts off. Let me get these ones over here and see if we can get the hood off with the camera focused in properly. All right. So there's our six bolts that hold the hood on. And um, we're gonna go ahead and attempt to take this hood off by ourselves. And hopefully we can get it off by ourselves. Bring it down like that. There we go. Okay, don't let it latch. Don't let it latch. That'll be a big mistake. And then we kind of kick it over this way. All right. There. We got it off by ourselves. That's all I needed to do. Is get it off. By yourself. Now we don't want it sloppily throw this around because there's actually pieces on it that we can use to save the owner money and one of them is that piece you're looking at right there the windshield wiper holder so we're going to go ahead and set this over here very gently and hopefully it won't wreck bitch okay the hood is off let's go in there and check out everything else but before we do let me take you one step further on fixing a collision job like this. What you're looking at right here, this is called a junkyard front nose. Now when I say that, what they do is they cut it at the windshield post, just like you see, and then cut it through the floor, and then you buy the whole front nose. Now, we didn't get lucky enough to get the radiator and the condenser on this. We did get lucky to get this piece right here, all right? And then we also got very lucky to get this whole core support. And I'm going to show you this core support, how intricate it is. You can see where it bolts on to the vehicle all around. And you can see where everything bolts in place on this. That's why it's called a collapsible core support. My personal opinion is this is a shit design. It's engineered to be a shit design. And it's basically not worth a crap. But if you go to buy it, that costs you about 1800 bucks plus to buy that piece of piece of shit. Um, you can kind of see how it's supposed to be sitting in there versus our less than 20 mile uh, accident, rear accident into a pickup truck bumper. And you can kind of see what we're talking about by being collapsible. Now somewhere in all this mess, and I don't know if it's on the other bumper. We're going to go over there and look at it in a minute. But somewhere in this mess, there is an uh, airbag sensor that needs to be replaced. And I'm speculating it's supposed to be up in this area right in here somewhere. And if we look at the front end of this and try to snoop around and, and schedule ourselves to look, I don't know where the sensor's at. So we'll have to get a detailed picture of that sensor. And I'm also... Uh, thinking that possibly that sensor isn't even on this front end. Use your brain as a parts computer. So when you put this thing back together, you know where all the stuff goes. That's another smart thing. Now, what did we get with the front end? Let me tell you what we got. And I will tell you, I paid 1250 bucks for this. I had to go all the way to Austin, Texas 
uh, to get it. It was an all-day drive from Dallas and back. Um, we got the complete core support, the rebar. We got the left fender that's wrecked. It does have minor damage. I will have to do body work to that. And we also got a complete hood, which is in here. Uh, we removed the hood so we didn't mess it up. And the hood is in excellent condition. We'll go ahead and look at that. There you go right there. So everything that we got was $1,200 that we need for this car. One more thing we got. We got the grill assembly. And I think I mentioned the bumper cover. Let's go look at that. Uh, this is not a mint condition bumper cover, but it's a usable bumper cover. You can see it right here. This is the bumper cover. That bumper cover is about $1,500 if you got to buy it. Um, it has a small crack or gouge right here. Here's the crack that i got to repair. But we can fix that, and this bumper will be fine to use. By the time you replace this bumper at the dealership, you are looking at a small fortune that you might have in your savings account to uh, replace it. Unless you're lucky like my friend Pete and happen to find a complete clip that has all this stuff. Now the owner says that wasn't worth it. He claims that $1,200 was too much fucking money for a fender that probably cost $900 at the dealer. You got $1,800 on a core support, $3,000 on a hood, and approximately $1,500 to $1,800 for a front bumper cover. But he said it was too much money and he's bitching and complaining. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Bitcher and Complainer. I'm not in here gouging you because it says Mercedes. I'm not overpricing and, and uh, exaggerating to the fact that you're driving a $100,000 car and I'm charging you the same price as if you were driving a Yugo. I'm not upping my price on the parts that you paid for. Actually, I paid for them. And I should have charged you 20% over, but I didn't. I'm a nice fucking guy. I gave them to you for $1,200. So quit your bitching and quit whining. What did we learn from our $100,000 collision repair job in a shop like my friend Pete's? We learned two things. We learned that we shouldn't treat the guy that drives the $100,000 Mercedes any different than the guy that drives a Yugo. That's not fair. And in return, we also learned that the small businessman gets screwed whether he treats the guy like a Yugo driver or not. The thing that you have about these people that drive these cars is if you do the job at a reasonable rate and you treat them like a human being, they believe they're getting screwed. What I should have done, what I should have done is told them that I found a front end for $3,500. Then he wouldn't have argued with me. Then he wouldn't have said it was too much money. And he would have went ahead with me and fixed this without any arguments whatsoever. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you collision jobs, telling you how they're repaired, and parts are blowing away, hold on. We gotta keep you. You can't go anywhere. You just stay right there. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm trying to save the customer money. I don't want to have to go to the dealership. Um, do what you gotta do. Have a good heart and treat everybody fair. Um, the problem you have with people in a higher end class of living that if you charge them you go prices, they're gonna think that you're scamming on them and ripping them off. So. You know, charge them what you believe should be charged and have a good heart that you didn't overcharge them and you're not ripping them off. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you that the $100,000 Mercedes is basically just as easy to work on as the $2,000 Kia or uh, the $3,200 uh, 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 S10 used truck. I don't know, whatever. We got to go. We got work to do here. And I gotta get this thing stripped down. There's about eight or nine hundred dollars. Look at that sensor on this thing. What the fuck is this? Look at this. This ain't just a fan. Look at that. Some kind of computer generated situation. Did I tell you that was over engineered? Did I say that? It's a car, not a spaceship. We're talking about doing collision work today, Minnie. Yeah. Can you go ahead and mention anything about it or you got anything to say? 
Not really. Something. It's a dirty job. Somebody's yeah. gotta do it. Right. I forgot to tell everybody it was Sunday today. Over here at SWRC Ranch. Not Homestead. We're still in Dallas. We're at the ranch. So we're taking the radiator off. And the last thing we got is this transmission line. Which is being a real pain in the ass. Am I right, Minnie? Yeah. Huh? <clears throat> so we've been working on this for about two and a half hours. Taking all this crap off. And we're finally to the end. And we're going to show you what we got here in a minute. If I get that off of there, now I'm binding up. What the hell, man? Jesus. Damn tranny line. So we got this one here that goes on the top. Do you see that? Are you looking? Yeah. Then we got that one on the bottom. This is our bottom radiator hose. Look how that thing slides on there. And then, of course, this is our top radiator hose, which probably has the same plastic fitting gizmo that goes on this one. And then when you get the radiator, it's got these built-on air intakes for your thing. So, yeah, there's your radiator right there. And I'm sorry to say, transmission cooler! Use your brain as a parts computer. So, come on over here. Let's look this thing over. This is the culprit. Let me get all these belts out of the way. We're gonna need a. We gotta replace this yeah. thing right here. Belted, looks like now, it's in it looks like drains. I'm gonna take this off of here. Hang on one second. Because I'm showing everybody about collision work that you should always you should treat everybody the same. Alright, you shouldn't overcharge this guy because he has a million dollar car versus the other guy that drives a ten dollar car. Do you agree with me on that, or what's your angle on that? Go ahead. How do you look at it? Because I already told everybody what I think. Well, you tell me. I guarantee the Mitchell manual that the insurance companies go by for hourly times yeah. is probably the sure way to go. But what about the guy, like the little small guy that doesn't have Mitchell manuals? Add three hours. Okay, what if they're working on a Kia? What if they're working on a well, Kia? Okay. And they come across a Mercedes guy that's driving a million dollar car. Should I charge that guy more money because he's driving a Mercedes? What's, why are you screaming at me all of a sudden? I'm not. Me? I just asked a simple question. Yeah, you are. Okay, I just asked a question. What would and, you do? Okay, the, the Kia front end damage yeah. would take a lot less time. You think? Yeah, then this. How is that? Absolutely. Because the Kia doesn't have agree. 25 sensors on it. Well, the I Kia agree. is not a quote unquote smart car like the Mercedes Benz would be considered. Well, that don't uh, agree yeah, with I, yeah. Mercedes right. would be more expensive because I, it's more time consuming. I disagree. Absolutely. So you think I should charge this guy more money? I think you should charge him quadruple. But why? I'm asking. I just told you, people, are you not listening to So it's me? not because, let me ask you this, it's not because he drives a million dollar car and he's rich, it's because you think that there's more work involved. There is more work. I'm sitting here watching you. Looking at this and this is like tangled up or something. And if you want to lie and say there's not, then go right ahead. Who's lying about anything? I was but just... does a Kia have all these sensors on it? No. First of all, we're not talking about that. You just, yeah, you were. I'm talking you're about, saying, listen you, to me. Ned, let me get louder because you're getting Okay, louder. go ahead. You don't need to get louder to be heard, Pete. Okay, listen to me, People please. don't listen to you when you're yelling. Can I talk People to don't me? listen to people that yell. Okay. Are you talking to normal okay, people? Can I talk now? Voice? No, you're still not listening. I am not talking about car versus car. I'm yeah, talking, you are. I'm talking I about. You, I'm, you just said a Kia versus a Mercedes. I'm talking should about. Should be different? And listen yeah, to it. Should. Listen to me, please. I said the guy driving a Mercedes versus the guy driving a Kia. Should I charge him more money because he's driving a Mercedes? The Mercedes takes a lot longer to work on. Yes, you should charge more. I'm not talking about I don't that. know why you think you have to scream. I'm talking hourly labor. 
Should I charge this guy uh, 80 bucks an hour instead of charging him $50 an hour for the Kia guy? Should I do that? Because he drives a million dollar car versus the Kia. I'm, I'm not talking about... I'm the camera person. I'm not talking to you, Pete. Ask your, ask your fucking fans. That's messed up. Because I'm not your okay. fan, and I'm not talking to you, okay? But what I'm trying to say is you're not... Ask anybody else. You're buddy. not listening. I am not talking... You're asking, asking I'm not I'm talking about question. more sensors on this car and more nuts and bolts. I'm talking about this owner versus that owner. Should I charge this guy more money because he drives a Mercedes? Well, you're just a fucking idiot to even ask that question. Do you think they do that in Walmart or Home Depot or anything else? Of course not! That's the most asinine fucking question I ever heard! Okay. And pull your pants up because no one wants to see your ass! Oh, she's laughing idiot. at me. You're Don't laugh at me. Why are you laughing at me? Why are you making me look like a clown? Stupid. Why am you're I the so clown? Stupid and everybody knows it. Why am I being a clown? Daddy, I'm not. I'm, embarrassed to say I'm, I'm not embarrassed the clown. Today. Oh, we're not married, so I'm yeah. not the clown. I, we're not married, everybody, so yeah, I'm not married to that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm she got a divorce yesterday. She divorced me yesterday. Never been married. Never been married. She divorced me yesterday. Yeah, we ain't married. What we got here is we got a car that uh, we just took the whole front end off. Um, and I'm going to ask Minnie a question now. Let's see if she can actually answer this one without arguing. Let's see if it's not asinine. Do you think this car is over-engineered? Yes or no? Uh, it's fancy. We'll put it I'm going to ask you this. Do you think it's over-engineered and the structure built on this car is not as safe as, let's say, an American-made car. Do you think that they literally take this car and engineer it so when you wreck it, you got to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to fix it? Do you think they do that? Many the body shop girl. I'm not sure exactly what you're asking for. What I'm you're saying... You're not supposed to be wrecking your car in the first place. Okay, but what I'm saying... No, they don't make these cars to fix easily. Yeah, no, they don't. Kia, yeah, a Kia is made to wreck and fix easily. But a Mercedes, no, it is not. It is highly engineered... I don't personally think it's over-engineered, but it is highly Okay, well, you're wrong. Because it's a luxury car. It is over-engineered. That's an It had 97 bolts holding that little stupid piece of metal on. And that's it. Oh, it's ridiculous. Right okay. It didn't look like it helped this car any. What we got the is... The part never fell off, did it? Okay, what we got here... It didn't here, even fall off when it got wrecked, did it? Look what we got. It was certainly did it. certainly did what it was supposed to do. Look what we got here. We got an oil filter housing that uh, needs replaced, and I'm thinking that uh, that might be a little bit of a chore putting that thing on, because I'm speculating that uh, that's actually part of this cover. Look, I don't think this is separate. From what I'm looking at, I sure hope that that isn't part of the case, because if that's part of the engine block, we're fucked. Look over here. Come here. Now here's a bolt here. Here's a bolt here. Here's a bolt here, and here's a bolt here. But where does this thing come off? Look at right here. It, it, it looks like it's no seam. there's no seam at all, and um, well, and then it goes down into here. I'm thinking that we got serious issues with this car. Uh, of course, our wire harness got crushed right here. We're gonna have to fix those. Okay, it was just one wire. Good. Something is seriously going on with that. But that's the problem you have with these high-tech bullshit cars when they're over-engineered. And that's what I'm trying to say. This is Pete over at SWRC doing a collision job and wishing everybody out there that's got a small business like mine that they don't have a wife like her. And you're making money unlike me. Is there anything you got to say? You're charging key of prices on Mercedes cars. That's all I got to say. And that's why you're fucking broke. Now, why did you have to say it so snotty like that behind the camera? Because it's the truth. Truth hurts sometimes, don't it?
How do you know I'm charging kid prices? I Who live with you and I'm broke. Come here, man. What? Did we get all this thing torn down? Yeah, I'm gonna take a break, man. I'm okay. taking a break. We're closing her down. Turn the air compressor off. It's Sunday. We've been out here five and a half, six hours. I want to get this thing done. Look at this. Come on over here. Look at this. Did I show you that? Look at this. Look at it over here. Come here. Come here, Minnie. That's broke. Oh, shit. Look at the bolt on this thing. Well, all I could say is good luck, Wes. Uh, he, might be, he might be scrapping this thing out a little sooner than you think if you got to replace the whole front end of the motor. It might not be worth it. We'll keep you updated on this situation as the situation goes. And hopefully you're enjoying DIY Auto School over here and learning a lot. Are they learning anything, Minnie? I don't know. Huh? What would you say they learned out of this whole video? What would you say? You're an idiot and I'm not. Yeah, I think that's funny, huh? Uh, you're dirtier than I am. What does that mean? Look at your face. Did you do like this? I don't know if I did or not. I'm sweating I, like a dog. I think you did. We'll see you later. Take it easy. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.